Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have March 13th, 2020. And well, I will give my lecture in quantum transport, lecture number five, in a bit uh, unusual circumstances. I will record my lecture. At the moment, the image is flipped. I will uh, have to try to fix it with some software. So I hope you will see enough. I hope you can follow the lecture. So lecture number five, fill of the gate. It is an uh, unusual lecture. We depart from scattering and we go to a world which in solid state physics is very strange. It is a world when interaction, electron electron interaction actually is very strong. Well, in solid state physics, such systems are difficult to treat. However, in quantum transport, everything becomes simpler, quite a surprise, and one can figure out what happens in the systems where interaction dominates in a very simple fashion. Good. That's what I will describe today. And that will come to a practical number structures, very simple, where we can understand the priorities of quantum transport. Uh, what are the topics I want to describe? First of all, charge quantization. Charge quantization is fundamental. It is very important then if you make you know, structure of boxes, almost isolated boxes. The number of charges in each box is integer. Good, which means that we need to make our structure from islands and barriers. We will talk about this, we will understand uh, under which conditions one can preserve this charge quantization. Well, it all boils down to electrostatic circuits. And then we put it to work. We consider in quite some detail as simplest Coulomb blockade transport device, which is called single electron transistor. And that would uh, give us opportunity to consider different transport mechanisms and mechanisms uh, to uh, opportunity to understand how does it work. Coulomb diamonds, it is a feature. Master equation, it is a method. Pendulum rates, it is what one needs to evaluate to understand how does it work. Coulomb oscillation staircase, it's also a feature. In the end of the lecture, I will discuss an interesting quantum phenomenon which occurs in Coulomb blockade uh, systems, so called co tunneling, which is cooperative tunneling of several electrons under conditions where single electron tunneling is a big All right, that's the plan for today. Let me go on. Let me um, start with the charge quantization. Let us consider an island, a metallic island, which consists of lots of atoms. And let it hang somewhere in vacuum and empty space. Right. Then my statement is that number of electrons 
in this island is quantized. The charge is quantized in units of elementary charge. That's obvious because full number of particles in an isolated island cannot change, so it has to take some value. That charge can be small, plus minus one, while the total number of electrons in this island could be zillions, but it's compensated by positive charges, by protons, uh, right? Uh, uh, even a small disbalance of charge can be detected. In which way? Let us understand the problem. If you put a charge into this island, well, it would not be distributed in the island. Rather, it will go to a surface of the island, and it will produce electric field outside. But electric field costs some energy, which one can evaluate, and which one can express in terms of capacitance of this island. So, we understand that if we want to charge our island, we have to pay some energy, charge of energy. What is this? Again, it can be expressed in terms of capacitance and charge, which is accumulated in the, in the island, right? So we have some constant times n squared, squared of number of excess charges. That sets an energy scale, charging energy as an energy scale. Let us understand how big is the scale. Well, we have to compare this with something. Let us compare with another scale. We have an isolated island, which means that the levels within the island are quantized, as in any isolated system. Let us just make a simple uh, estimation how much this could be. Let's take uh, whatever concrete island which has uh, all dimensions of the order of 100 nanometers. If you express it in a number of atoms in this island, well, it's a billion. What money? How one can estimate uh, level splitting? All electron states eventually occupy electron band. The width of this band is set by Fermi energy of uh, this metal. Typical Fermi energies are measured in volts. Say 10 volts would be good estimation. And the, the, the number of levels within this band is uh, more or less the number of electrons in there. Well, the number of electrons is proportional to the number of atoms, uh, so that would be the splitting delta would be 10 volts divided by number of atoms, well, that would be quite a small value of 10 to the minus 8 electron volts. Let us see, let us now estimate charge and energy. Well, we can estimate it assuming geometric capacitance, which works a bit like Coulomb flow. Typical distance between the charges is L. So the energy is E squared divided by L. So it's case like L, it's case like Look, it's a uh, uh, number of atoms to the power of 1c. And 
it appears to be that the energy is sizable in much bigger than this energy by almost how many orders of magnitude? Five orders of magnitude. So it is more important than the energy related to kinetic uh, uh, of the quantization of kinetic energy of electrons. So we have here eventually the case of strong interaction. Energy coming from interaction does dominate. Very good. Uh, let us see. Suppose we want to put an electron into this island. We have to pay the energy. And if we don't, uh, how we can supply this energy? It can come from external voltage source. It can come in temperature, from temperature fluctuations. And if it happens that we don't have this energy in our disposal, we just cannot put an electron over there. It's expressed in words as transfer is blocked. It cannot go. That explains the term Coulomb blockade. Right. Uh, let us consider a simplest device which utilizes charge. This device has an island, we put it here. Well, uh, it would be kind of boring to have this island only because this charge cannot be changed. Let us uh, have nearby a metallic electrode, a lead. And we would allow some channeling between the lead and the island in order to change the number of electrons. Uh, but how to energize it, how to actually uh, implement such a change? Well, we add Yet another electrode, which is called gate electrode. It's not electrically connected to the island, no electrons here. But what it does, it shifts its potential with respect to the lead. Thereby, it kind of invites electrons go, go, go to the island or repel it back, depending on the sign of voltage which we apply here voltage would be with respect to the ground so we assume that the lead is grounded so here the voltage comes fine let us now compute energy of the system at a given number of electrons and Well, uh, how to do this? It is a uh, kind of um, electrostatic problem. It helps you solve similar problems. And the cost of uh, whatever electricity, magnetism, it has very little to do with magnetism. It's just electrostatic. So there are two capacitors in series. C is a capacitor between lead and island. C gate capacitance between island and gate. Uh, we assume that there are n charges here and we uh, compute electrostatic energies accumulated in the capacitors. Well, here's the answer. You see, it's quite similar to the answer for isolated island. The only point, this n can be shifted by applying gate voltage. This shift is continuous, one calls it 
induced charge, while actual charge is this thing. Right? So, the charge corresponding to the minimum of energy is discrete, is an integral part of this expression. Let me plot it. Perhaps I can uh, zoom in. So I plot here the energy of the bus versus gate of voltage and the parabolas which you see here corresponds to different number of discrete charges to get the lowest energy state I would have to connect the lowermost pieces of each parabola so I end up with a periodic curve made from parabola pieces right and what you see is that number of charges extra charges changes upon changing gate voltage let me move to the next route here we are it is a loose bit of compass it is a staircase N is a function of gate voltage, changes step by step by integer steps. Fine? Alright, that's a simple device. We can store electron charge, uh, uh, we can store charge in this device, we can tune it by gate voltage. It's essential that electrons can tunnel between between the lead and the eye. All right. Let me discuss how strong this tunneling can be. Let me discuss how to uh, arrange a situation of practically. Suppose we have a shortcut between the lid and the island. One understands that in this case one cannot just keep uh, integer uh, number of uh, electrons uh, uh, because uh, this would be a, a part of the, of the lid. The charge can be continuous here. So we need to isolate it vector. In practice, one makes tunnel junctions to separate the uh, lead from the island. This tunnel junction can be, for instance, made from metallic oxide. So one evaporates a film on some substrate. Then one oxidizes this film. There is oxide layer. And then one evaporates another film so this is very old-fashioned, but always working way right, to make tunnel contacts between two metallic fields. Right. And if you make this uh, connection uh, too weak, well, there will be no electron transfer. It would take weeks before electrons could tunnel so this barrier, if you make it too strong, you got a shortcut. So one has to understand what would be what would be uh, the criteria when we can have charge quantization. Here's the answer. Uh, 
The answer comes from a somewhat strange estimation which employs quantum mechanics in classical context. Let us see. We have capacitance of the island and let us characterize the contact between island and the leaf with a resistance. Then we understand there is a typical time scale when we can charge or discharge of the island. This is called RC time in the theory of electric circuits. That's completely classical concept. Let us confront it with uh, quantum cars, with Heisenberg and Socrates information. In this case, we will uh, compare energy of the state of Coulomb blockade state and their time as the time at which it can persist. And we implement Heisenberg uncertainty relation. If this time is long, it is, it's fine, we can have this level of energy here. But if this state can exist only for a short time, well, that's not possible because uh, if you have a large uncertainty in energy, that's what Heisenberg correlation tells us. Good. So to have uh, <coughs> a good state, this value must be much bigger than h bar. Let us now substitute energy and try capacitance cancels and the criteria reads as follows. The resistance of this tunnel barrier must exceed by far resistance quantum. Resistance quantum is just inverse of our old acquaintance conductance quantum. So it appears again in quantum transport, but now in, not in the context of scatter theory, it characterizes Coulomb blockade. Right, that's one requirement. The uh, resistances of all barriers must exceed by far resistance quantum. Also, to keep Coulomb blockade, one has to have low temperature, otherwise it will be destroyed by some filtrations, and low voltages, much smaller than the charged energy. Good. We have the conditions. Let me go to a device. So we'll consider a single electron transistor. As any transistor, it is something where conductance, electron flow, is affected by set voltage, by gate voltage. Right, so we have uh, an island between two leads, left and right. We apply voltages between these two leads. And in addition, we apply gate voltage. As we know, it will change 
the number of electrons in this island if there is no voltage difference uh, in here. If there is, situation is more complex. Uh, we will consider that. But at, at the moment, let me uh, understand what are energies to pay for changing number of electrons over here. Good. There is a formula for this energy. It has all features that we have seen already. It this contains capacitance. And logically enough, it's full capacitance of this island. So it uh, is made from capacitance to the leads, capacitance to the gate. Uh, right. Um, number of uh, charges minus induced charge squared. Induced charge is contributed by all electrons with corresponding voltages. So leads in principle also induce some charge to this island. Good. Uh, let us now add one electron and see how much uh, energy difference it costs. Well, adjust the difference of this two. Uh, what is uh, important for me to pay attention to is this linear function of n, linear function of induced charge. Why? That's a change of charge in energy. But it's not all. We also, there's another energy which we change while transferring an electron. Uh, let me get it inside and let me simultaneously do some bookkeeping. Let me consider all possible processes which can occur in this single electron transistor. At a given number of charges, four possible stories can happen. There are four possible electron transfers. It's all in there. An electron can come from the left lead, can come to the right lead. Or if you do uh, if otherwise, from the island to the left lead. Uh, and to the island from the right lead. Good, let us understand the energy differences associated with these processes. First, um, from the left. We increase number of electrons uh, in the island by one, we have to pay that much uh, charging energy. But besides, what we also did, we have removed an electron from the lead at potential VL. We have to take it into account. The potential. Same we do it for the rate in the north direction. In this case, we add this potential. And okay, similar, we consider the processes uh, when electrons uh, involve right junction. Okay, now we have all these energies, and uh, again, let me note that the linear functions of uh, voltages involved at the given end. 
right? Let us understand simple but important things. Suppose temperature is zero. The electron transfer of a certain kind can only happen if associated energy difference is smaller than zero. What does it mean? In simple uh, terms, everything rolls down here. It's easy to lose energy. It's impossible to gain energy. That sets whether a certain transfer can or can not occur. Let me consider simple examples, what one can do, uh, situations when some transfers are forbidden, some transfers are allowed. Simplest situation is below black eye. In this case, energy differences at a given end associated with all possible transfers are just positive. So there is no way for electron to enter the island, it would have to go to a state of high energy. Okay. Let us rise the voltage on one electron. Then it's possible for a single electron to enter. And then it's possible for it to tunnel out so these two transfers can happen, so electrons can go through the structure. Very well, we have electric current. What specifics of this current? We cannot perhaps appreciate this immediately, but let us understand the following. If electron is there, the entrance of another electron is forbidden by energy consideration. This is the condition for that. So electrons have to go one by one through the structure. At no time two electrons can be present here. All right. That was about uh, electron transfers in single electron transistor. We will look at it in more detail. Let's have a break for the time being. Just button break.